All right, today's fun. We're gonna install some signals back here and a license plate. But actually, I already got the signals on there. Can you see them? Can you see them now? There they are. Let me show you what I did. Gotta get the seat off. Next is getting this fender off, getting all four bolts off of each side, lift this off. So what we got here is the rear end of a 2022 Indian Chief. And we have the right signal for the harness and the left signal on the harness. What I was originally gonna do, I was gonna build a mount that hooks into here. This is where the stock mounts hook into and it would stick out the back. But then I thought, you know, what if I used the shock mounts? So I've already cheated. I took the ones that I had on here off and I originally was gonna put it right here on the threads, but then I thought, you know, unless I had some metal, it wouldn't really work out because I needed something that could be torqued against when that nut's there. I think this thing's torqued down to like 65 foot pounds. And just for the record, if you want to do this, like take your suspension uh, nuts off, you can do that without messing with the bike. You know, we got them off on both sides. There's load on the suspension, they're not gonna go anywhere. So there's like no risk of the uh, strut and the spring just shooting out the side. It's just, there's too much load back there. But I said, what if I put something on the rubber bushing right here? I forget what kind of plastic this is or uh, rubber, but it's very hard. And so I said, what if I built something that could mount right there just enough so when I put the nut on there, it wedges it in between it. And that's when I came up with this. This is a plastic mount that I designed Fusion 360. Very simple, but very complicated for me because I'm still learning. And this is on here, is wedged just like that. And I know it's super long, but this was my original piece when I was designing a tag bracket. I put it right there. And voila, it wedges it on there and it rotates, it takes a little bit of force to rotate it. Now the only downside is you start to kind of wear out that part of that rubber bushing, but there's still rubber in between here. So it's not just gonna like, you know, destroy it at the end of the day. But over time, you know, if you keep pulling it off, putting it on, pulling it off, pulling it on, you could, you know, get some wear on that rubber. But when I was designing a mount, you can see that I actually need to fix those threads. When I was designing a license plate mount, what took me so long is that I didn't want something back here, but I also didn't want something on this side that was gonna cover up my pretty springs, which is what the stock one does, it sticks off to the side. So I said, what if I had something that mounts off the axle? I've seen license plates mount off the axle, but then you gotta deal with it when you're taking off the tire. Well, with the suspension struts, they don't come off too often. And so that's why I decided maybe I could design one that bridges off the bushing and that's where this came from. And with a little bit of work, my Picasso plate, I have this that has that piece on it with a backing piece blended in. Now I know what you're thinking. Does it rub? No, because it moves with the swing arm and the strut. So it's not moving in any way to actually rub the swing arm. And the next part is, does it actually move? Well, I put a mark on the piece of plastic here and a mark on the nut that holds all this down and it simply did not move. So this is a sturdy piece. Now, of course, if you actually scrape it, it's probably gonna destroy it because it's nothing but plastic. But if you're going this low, you got another ish. You got another problem going on. The design of this and the design of the tag bracket, I came up with this for the signal lights. So at the top, we have that same diameter for the stud mount and this little piece is made to hold the signal light. And with a little bit of evolution, we've come up with this. This is a cheap $20 set of signal lights on Amazon. I'll leave a link down to these in the description. You can see they're threaded through with a nut on the back and a locking washer. And here's the cable. The reason I'm coming back in here is because when I was testing everything, I did not like crimp anything down, make it permanent. It's just all just twisted together. And so I'm gonna make this look a little bit more professional than it was before. With these signal lights, you got four wires. You got red, black, yellow, and white. White is negative. Yellow is amber for the turning signal. 
red is going to be your brake light and black is going to be your running light. So the light just being on. Well, Indians, at least the chief and the scout, they only use two wires, black and red, and we got four wires. So the ECM on these bikes, they, they handle the difference in you pressing the brake and you turning the signal light on, which is why there's only one color back there that's red. And so the way these are wired in, black from the Indian harness goes to white on the signal for uh, ground, neutral, and the red and black on the signal light is wired to the red on the Indian harness for running light, brake light, and turn signal. Because again, the ECM handles the brake light and the turning signal. And so the way I'm gonna wire this up is just like this. This is the stock uh, Indian harness cover just so I can cover that boat up because it's exposed to the elements. Tape them off just like that, red and black, ground and the yellow is just taped off in the center. So with the wiring done, I'm gonna slide this back up through here. Normally I would do like heat shrink tubing, soldering to kind of like make it permanent, but I may end up changing these out, doing something else. And uh, I don't wanna make it like super permanent, but this just slots on like that. For the diameter of this, this is actually 21.5, I believe. So this fits perfectly on it. This actually does not rub as much as my license plate does, but um, now what I can do is I got the other pieces just clamp them on there probably tape them off and bridge them in and we're good to go and we don't have any exposed wires like I did have before you can see the yellow um, the respective wiring colors so we're going to tilt it right there I may end up uh, you know wanting to have a modular setup where maybe I'm doing something with the rear these won't work with saddlebags as well and I don't want to be locked into this if I made them permanent with solder. So this is gonna be the next best thing. Right side, left side, harness, harness. Yes, I left that extra cable. I'm 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 cable paranoid. I feel like I never have enough. I have the flexibility. Press the button. Signal. Signal looking good. I love it. Brake light. Brake light. My socket's a little loose because my 18 is MIA right now, so I gotta use the 19. But notice that little gap right there is just enough where the nut bottoms out against the bushing. I'm not gonna torque this down, I'm just gonna give it some good. That's good. Alright, so we're gonna take this off because this was a prototype. We're gonna put the real thing on there now. Prototype, <laughs> I guess all of this is technically a prototype, and this is the real thing. So if you notice, how the piece here, the mount, is moved more towards the left, and that's because a real plate has, uh, I think about five millimeters more maybe on the sides, maybe 10, 10 millimeters more, and it ends up bumping the swing arm. So I move that piece to the side, 10 more millimeters, and that gives me the space that once I put a regular tag on here, it lines up exactly where it needs to. All right, so we're gonna put this on here just like this. Honestly, I might have made this. I might have made this too loose. Hey, you know what? The cool part about it, if I want to reprint it, I can just reprint it. When I first made this, I did not have a good way to mount the plate to the back, so I used some zip ties. Now, if you keep changing that plate, you got to keep cutting zip ties. It gets, it becomes a thing. So I found somebody that actually made some T bolts, and they work. T bolts, man. We got the T bolts on the top. And we got the nut on the bottom. Don't worry about this plate. I know it's old as dirt, but I could not find my plate to piss off everybody that said fake HD. So we're going to roll with this one. And there we have it, folks. Plate is mounted. Now, the only thing this does get in the way when it's time to start messing with my axle. But I can always just kind of fold it down out of the way. But problem is I did shave off a little bit too much because I was playing with the dimensions on this. I need to go back and tweak it. 
I'm off by like 0.25 millimeters. The other one wasn't like this, but this was the one that I played around with it just to see if I can mess with it. But anyway, right where we need to be, you see that gap is there. Everything's lining up and it ain't going nowhere. One thing I did not expect, it illuminates enough to where it actually lights up the, the strut on the side, which is great for at night. But I promise you, even though it looks like the light is being blocked right there, it is very visible from the back. These do have uh, rapid flash because the load from these tiny LEDs kind of throw it off a little bit, but I, I'm not worried about that. I'll fix that later. What I'll probably do next is I'll add a license plate light and connect it to the harness. I'm not really worried about it right now, but I'll probably get the one from the stock license plate, kind of glue it on here and run that cable up probably alongside the wheel speed sensor right there, and then kind of run it down through the bottom and up right there. I'll save that for another time. So yeah, that's my new license plate and signal light setup. Very simple. I'll leave a link down to these little signal lights in the description. I printed these in PLA. Normally I would do PETG because PETG stands up to the uh, UV rays and temperature a lot more, but I'm not worried about heat on these. And if something happens, I'll just print some more. But um, I like the blue. It does stand out versus it blending in with black or something like purple to match this, but I'm, I'm not too worried about it. I like that it just stands out and you can see that something was custom done or something that's just different, the accent, the bite. But this bite looks sick as it is. Yeah, let me know what y'all think about it down below. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe so you can see more about this bike and any other thing that I do. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace.